Hello everyone and welcome to this Esri Ireland tutorial. My name is Selene and I will be showing you how you can create a dashboard linked to your ArcGIS Online organization to better manage and monitor your content and credit usage. This tutorial is based on a blog post and will have all the information you will need to complete this activity. So let's get to it. Our first step is to set up the tables that will feed the dashboard at the very end. The blog goes in detail about the breakdown of how the dashboard works, but you can take some time to read this on your own. This tutorial is going to focus on the steps you need to take to set up the dashboard. You will need to publish three tables and I will show you how to do the first one, table item. The exact fields you will need to put in place for each table will be detailed below. I've opened an Excel spreadsheet to create my first table. Now I will simply type in the fields I need according to the information provided. For example, ID, title, owner, full name, etc. I've just gone ahead and put in all the required fields. Please note that the script we will be working with is case sensitive, so please ensure that all your fields are spelled and formatted exactly as they have been provided. I can now rename the sheet and the file and save as a CSV. Now that we have our table, we can upload it to our ArcGIS online account. So we simply go to new item, choose the your device option, and locate the table we just made. At this point, it's very important that we change the data type according to the information provided. The first few here are all strings. But down here we have integers, um, double and date. So I'm going to go ahead and change those. So it should look something like this. Your table won't have any location data, so you can select this option. Once your table is uploaded, make sure to take a note of the item ID. You can find it up here in the URL or down here. On to step two, where we download and upload the notebook that has been provided to us in the blog. It's just a little bit further down from the information about the tables and we click download. And we click download again and it'll now be on your computer. Then we navigate back to our content, we select new item, your device once again and here it should be the most recent download. I'm going to rename it and add some tags. Now that everything is set up, uh, we can go ahead and start to configure the notebook. First things first, we need to go to the settings and change the notebook settings to ArcGIS Notebook Python 3 Standard 4.0. Now we can open our notebook. And this might take a minute or two. When the notebook finally opens, um, it should some, look a little something like this. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can configure the notebook. 
So as you can see here, we've got table underscore item. Um, it doesn't matter how you named your tables, this is gonna work as long as you've got the right um, item IDs. So as I mentioned before, make sure to take a note of them and then you can just copy and paste it and pop it in here. And do the same for the other two. The notebook is quite well structured, so it makes it easier to um, fill in the information where you need to. Um, so we're just gonna take the item ID again from here. And we scroll down a little bit further until we get to this part where it says, if this is the first time running the notebook, create the hosted table with the following CSV. We can ignore that, but what we do want is to pop in the item ID here. Make sure to put it into double quotation marks. We go up and we do the same with table user. So we just take that and that's item administration. So we go down to user administration. Again, we'll find a piece of code that says if this is the first time running the notebook and then just a little bit further and then just pop it in here. And finally, the same with the FS table. Scroll down, down, down. Hosted feature service tracking. And we pop it in here. Remember to put it in the double quotation marks. Once the notebook has been configured correctly, we can run the script. But before we do, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of things. This circle represents the status of the kernel. A kernel refers to the core component of an operating system. It is a program or software module that acts as a bridge between the hardware and software layers of a computer system. An empty circle indicates that the kernel is not currently running or connected to the notebook. A filled circle indicates that the kernel is running and connected to the notebook. So just to be sure, we're gonna to go to the kernel tab over here and we're gonna reconnect. The kernel is ready. So we're gonna run all of the cells. We go to the cell tab and we click run all. Now you might notice this little star here. This means that the um, block of code hasn't run yet. If we go up to the top, we can see that there is a one. That means that the computer has processed this code. There wasn't much to do here, so that's why it was so fast. But the rest can take a little bit longer. Leave this for a few minutes to run and wait for all the stars to turn into numbers and the code will have successfully run. So hopefully your script will have run and you'll know this because there'll be a little 19 in the last block of code at the very end. If there are any issues, the script won't run until the end and this box will be empty and you'll be able to find um, the error message further up in the script, but hopefully it will have run. So now we can move on to step four, which is creating a task, for, a scheduled task so that the script will run every day. Very simple. We go up to the tasks tab up here and we create a new task. Enter a title. I'm gonna call it daily run. Select next, beginning today, repeat type daily, ending on never, and then you can choose the time. So eight in the morning, update notebook on completion, make sure that that is ticked. And it will have done that successfully. So everything to do with the notebook and script is finished and we can move on to creating the dashboard. Under step five in the blog, simply click create a copy, which will open a new tab where you can copy the fully configured dashboard provided by the authors of the blog.
It will have the sample information in it, so it is simply a case of swapping their tables for your own. Each element can be configured to your liking. So as we can see here, it says um, under the data tab, they're using the item details sample. So we can just go and change it. for our item table. And you can just go through each element and change it accordingly. I would recommend creating two copies of the dashboard so that you can refer back to how each element is configured. Because when you change the data, often the configurations can go back to um, to the default or how they were before. So for instance, um, the statistic is sum and the field is size MB. We go back to this, see it's changed to count. So we just need to change it to sum. And you wanna make sure that it's exactly the same as before. So if you create two copies, you can have another tab open um, and refer back to how it has been configured. And there you have it. Uh, it will update every day and you'll be able to better manage your credits and the content on your ArcGIS online organization. Thank you very much.